these kind of shots never get old to me. I love seeing the sunset. Uh, I wish it was just a little bit more in the picture, but this is the last part of the day, but I thought I'd start the video with it just because you can see the clouds going under the wing and we're just trucking along at 50410. The last leg of the day. But, like I said, it's a good video to start with. Morning. Today, uh, interesting flight. I got the exact same flight I did a few days ago. Uh, Scott sailed to Palm Beach, Florida. A little different. We're actually empty. Um, this is a reposition flight. Don't do these a lot. We just got some interesting things going on where we had a trip over there, but then we had to get some people back to another part of the country. Uh, we don't normally do a lot of reposition flights, maybe once a month, not quite that much. They're, yeah, you can see they're somewhat wasteful, but it's cheaper than owning a second airplane. Now, this flight we're gonna do a little different because I'm empty. The winds are similar. They're not quite as strong as 41. They're about the same at 45. We'll go over at 45, and since it's just me, we'll pull the power back and do more of an efficient. We're not gonna do long range cruise. We're just gonna do like a normal cruise. So probably we're in that 7.2 to 7.4 Mach range. And we'll, I'll show you the different fuel burn. Um, this is a nice one because I can relax a little bit, use the camera a little bit more in depth and take pictures a little better. So come along with me, it's the same flight. that You might notice in the back window behind me, the weather's a little different. It's raining, so not that that's a big deal. It might affect our takeoff number, well it will affect our takeoff numbers, our takeoff runway required, but realistically it's not a bad day of weather. Someone asked about these seats. The seats aren't huge. Really any business jet is not designed for a huge person. So I'm sitting here, once I have to take off, I would push a seat out and relax. Um, if you got four people in here, it's, it's a business jet. I always tell people the interior, it's like a nice leather glove. There's room where you need it, but none extra. Now, remember this Phenom competes with a CJ4, which you just lose a couple inches in each, each direction. So um, one of the reasons why we have it, that and the fuel efficiency. But there you are. So, like I said, I'll try to get more interior stuff in that, but today it's more about a long flight, fuel burn, and what we got going on. So, let's go for the ride. Okay, we're powering up, so I'll just take you along. Our databases are good. I'm just coming alive. Batteries check, we're good, 24-2. We're waiting for the GPU to get hooked up. Right. Pause it here and when the GPU gets hooked up, I'll take some more. While we have the flight plan in, I'll just give you kind of show you what we see. And there's no windshield wipers. We just look to the windshield like this. And you can see. Then, uh, for all you've been asked about, that was a PC24 set next to us. Apparently, the windows can't get wet. And then there's a couple citations next to us on this side. So again, we're looking at departures, some cloud covered mountains. We got the movie map set up, or the chart set up. Something you don't see every day at the airport is a couple, probably marine harriers. Yeah, that's our window, I know. There we are, leaving the ramp. It's actually raining pretty good at the moment. Let me show you, we can put this as a chart and it shows our airplane on it. We can also pull up the weather. That'll show you the winds and the weather we're in, like we're right there, in the airplane, that shows you what we got to fly through. I can put this on the normal map, I, I actually like to keep it separate, but that's my opinion, so it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Then we got just the normal map. I got that down at 7 miles, because a lot of people come out of here, there's a lot of traffic, but today with the weather, we're getting rid of a lot of flight training. So, that's got some towers, we said pop over up. Here and you can see we got the wing stem on, the engine 
the ties on and the windshield on. I can also show you that here. This is what the outside, inside of a cloud looks like. A whole lot of nothing. Now the, the wing stab on, the wing and stabilizer on, does not help on our climb. So we'll see how she does. Yeah, here we are, just getting ready to level 450, which uh, we didn't make bad time up here with the one fairly long level off and then flying through the 20s and low 30s with the wing, or in the 20s with the wing anti-ice and tail anti-ice on. That really slows up our climb, but we still did it in 28, 29 minutes. And I always climb at 500 feet a minute, 43 and up, so that's four minutes right there, 43 to 45. We'll see what we're doing right now. We're getting to Mach 7 -0. I'll move that tick mark up to 7-2. We get to 7-2. That's kind of our target. We'll get between 7-2 and 7-4 and see what kind of fuel burn we'll end up getting. So, I'll just to give you an idea, there's not a lot outside. Not a lot to see. I'll put the shade down. And you can really see there's no ground contact anymore. We're just above the clouds at 45. That would be New Mexico down there. Hopefully, let some ground contact go out. And you can see it's about as far as the eye can see. Yeah, here's a video coming up right in one hour. Now, here's our box speed. It's about 729 or 73. It's been anywhere from 742 to about 729. So, and we'll come down here right at one hour. 59 minutes, 37 seconds is what we've flown for. So, and then our fuel burn at one hour. We burn 1,200, let's just say 1,260 pounds. So, you can see this is a lot less than last flight. Last flight we were at 1,470 in one hour. So again, I'll stir that down. It's right at one hour. We'll say 1,260 for the first hour. So 1,260. Per hour fuel burn is 432 aside, or basically 860 pounds, roughly. We were actually, we were just getting ready to pull it back because we were at 74, 742, and you know we got a little, apparently a little jet stream weight. We slowed down a little bit, but we were planning on pulling back the power at about 420, which I think we will anyway for the next hour. And then we'll show you the fuel burn. So we'll, I'll write that down, and we'll have a summer at the end of it. We're at 1260 pounds. Which I think is extremely good because at 1260 we still had a level off and we had to climb with the, uh, the wing and the tail anti-ice on, which really slowed us down. So that's really good. That kind of shows you the difference. Granted, we're not doing Mach 7677 like last time. Apologize for that quick cutoff in that last video. We'll just finish talking here. Except we're doing 73. Uh, we're getting a little ground contact finally. Let's see, we're. Uh, Probably a little bit of West Texas and New Mexico down there. I never get sick of looking at the image of the wing going up through the sky. There we are, we're gonna pull that power back and see what we do for the next hour. We're about a minute, minute, a couple seconds away from uh, the one hour mark, or the two hour mark. I decided to show you down here. Down there we got Houston. Houston's the first spot here, and then there. Oh. Apologize about that. I had a talk on the radio, but I, then I believe Galveston's more out there on the coast, so that'd be the Houston Galveston area, and then that'd be the Gulf of Mexico. So I'm just going to give you a better idea. Let's just look at the right side of the airplane. We'll come back in here. Like I said, we're at 45,000 feet. We're still at 74. Like I said, we pulled the power back to about 420 pounds aside. You know, we're at 87 percent N1. Computer same for crews at the 80. That's uh, more focus right here. 87.6. Like I said, we're almost to one, almost the two-hour mark. We're showing 
I can end up right about 3,000 pounds used at two hours. Excuse me. I say 3,000. 2,000 pounds used at two hours. I don't know. Apparently, I'm sitting up here for myself too long. I'm crazy. So. Again, we're doing seven to four, so it's about time to pull the power back again. We'll get the fuel burn recorded from this spot at at two hours, and then then we'll pull the power back. Probably go to about 410 pounds a side. So, like I said, here we are, two hours. We we'll right down 2,100 pounds. Just a few moments after we took that recording, I just pulled the power back. We're going to set it right there. It's going to be 406 pounds a side, 86.1 N1. And we'll see what that does. Actually, we're going to try to keep it above 72, which I got a thick mark, and below 74. It'll probably ease back here just a little bit over time. But it's, it's doing pretty well. And we've got a great tailwind. I mean, we're getting 500 ground speed. Yeah, so it's, it's real good. And if you want to see kind of where we're at on the map, there. You can see we're just coming out of Texas, going to go to Louisiana and then the Gulf. We're going to Florida. You can see the flight plane gets a little, kind of, a little busy over there. That's our route. Here we are, we're coming up on three hours of flying. And you can see uh, we're, we're doing 7.3 pretty good. Our speed's only 413, but we got a tailwind still. As you can see, there's blue underneath on the horizon. So, in the fuel burn, we're actually under 400 pounds a side of fuel. So you can see that right there. We're just, you know, so we're just under 800 pounds an hour. So, here we are, we're coming up on three hours. Our fuel burn is 2,900. Around 2,900, we'll use it on. Those of you that are pretty uh, aviation savvy, you might notice I turned the airways on on the map so you can see the different airways. Like these are the wide ways uh, over the Gulf. And up here you can see some of the funneling from Florida. I think those are the end rounds that go to Mexico. And all this blue stuff is restricted military warning spaces. They have a lot of that when you get close to the international waters. I'm not sure how well this will turn out, but this just kind of shows you that first hour we only burned 1260. And I don't know if you remember that last video where we climbed and went faster, we burned 1460. Then our total was 21 hours at two, which means we only burned 840 pounds in the second hour. And if you come down here to 3,000 for the third hour, that means that means we only burned. Yeah, I wrote that down wrong. It was supposed to be 2,900. I was thinking something. 2900, we only burned 800 pounds in the third hour. So that's pretty good. Yeah, you can see we're at 2920 right now. We're a few minutes into the hour three. So, oh, got to talk. And I'll just continue this with the. I had to talk to Senator there. I right, just continue this. You can see a little bit of green starting to show up on the edge of that horizon. So I'm going to pull this out. You can see these are the these are white clouds, the spotty clouds. You see those over water all the time. These are blue water. And you go out there, and there's another little cloud layer starting. I don't know what shows up, but that'd be the land. That'd be Florida over there. And you can just barely make out up there. Probably the north coast of Florida, like at Destin area and stuff like that. Oh, that's I can see with the naked eye, but I don't think it's going to show up on here. Let me try. Well, I hope you're enjoying these videos here. Uh, we did come in here, it was three hours and 47 minutes. Um, actually, it was only a few minutes longer than the other flight because we went real fast the other flight. But because um, the VIP, the, and they slowed us down and they did a bunch of S-turns over all of Florida, uh, we gained a lot of time in that one. But this was a really nice flight. I hope you're enjoying these videos. But this is a good example that you can fly this plane a little slower, burn a lot less fuel. You can go really fast and it will burn a little bit more fuel. So I, I don't like to fly it below about 7.2, Mach 0.72, because I just think then it starts seems like everything gets real long. Now, the nice thing is we had a pretty good tailwind, better than I thought we would. The only problem is I do the opposite direction tomorrow, and I, 
looks like we're gonna have to break this flight up because it's set it's 1750 miles let's just call it that nautical miles yeah the plane has a range of 2,000 miles but with the headwind you're gonna add you know if it's five hours of flying and you got a 60 knot let's just say 50 knot headwind that's 250 more miles and we'll actually have more than that um, I, I figured it'd take about five hours and 20 to five hours and 30 minutes to do it non-stop back we can't do that at five hours we're realistically if we're doing Mach 7 2 we'll use our fuel up and then go on the end reserve maybe five hours five minutes five hour ten but not 530 so we're gonna break it up find a place to stop in Texas on the way back so again hope you enjoyed the video hope you're liking them uh, if you like them and then if you first time on the on the channel go and subscribe thank you much